Hello and welcome back to IXL Tutorials. This is Mr. Duffick and today we are doing IXL T10 which is comparing surface area and volume of shapes after they change in scale. So uh, this goes hand in hand with T9 and uh, in fact after you do this video it might be uh, in your interest to go to T9 and do it. I don't know why they put T9 before this one. It seems like this one would be uh, beneficial. Um, to know before T9, but whatever. Um, and so what you really need to know here is you're going to start with the shape like this, and they're going to say, hey, the dimensions increase by doubling, by tripling, by quadrupling, or something like that. And then it will ask about what happens to either its surface area or its volume, okay? Now, in T9, the video I already did, I explained that it's really, really um, important to know that... If you are increasing something, let's say by tripling, you know, all three dimensions are tripled, and it's asking what's happening to the area or the surface area of that shape or 3D solid, that means whatever you are tripling your dimensions or you are increasing your dimensions by, which in this case is tripling, uh, for area, since it's two dimensions, you're going to be squaring whatever you are increasing your dimensions by, and that is going to be the factor for your new area. So for instance, this problem, it says all the dimensions are tripled. That means the area, the surface area, is going to be uh, increased by three squared. So tripled squared. So three squared is going to be nine. So it's going to be uh, the surface area of the new shape is going to be nine times as large as the original one. So it's going to be this one. Okay. Um, and before I leave, I'm going to make my other point. For volume, Volume is three dimensions, right? Area is two dimensions. Perimeter, circumference stuff, like that's consider that one dimension. Area stuff is going to be two dimensions, so you're squaring. And volume is going to be three dimensions. And so that is going to require um, cubing whatever uh, dimension increase you have. So here is surface area, so we have nine. Okay says if the width is tripled, then which of the following statements is true about the volume? Okay, well, so that principle is true, what I was just talking about there. But if you're ever in doubt, what you can do is you can essentially compute their calculations here. Okay, so it's asking what happens to the volume if just the width is tripled, so if just this is tripled. So what you can do is you can compare the volume of the first shape to the second shape. So we'll do 6 times 10 times 1 is 60. Okay, so now we go to the width, and we see it's 1, so let's triple the width real quick. 3 times 1 is going to be just 3. So 6 times 10 is 60, and then 60 times 3 is 180. So we go from a volume of 60 to 180, so what happens? Well, it gets bigger by 3, right? So now we're going to confirm that. We're going to do three. Okay. Uh, if the height is tripled, then which of the following statements of the volume will be true? So this one is just doing the height. So we're going to do a breakdown like we were just doing. So this one's going to be volume equals pi times r squared times the height over three. And so we're going to plug that in. We're going to do pi r squared, so 25 times the height is going to be 8 all over 3, which is going to equal 200 pi over 3. Okay, now let's do the uh, let's do the new volume here. It says the volume is, or I'm sorry, the height is going to be tripled, so 8 is going to become 24. And now let's do the next calculation pi times 25 times 24 over 3. Okay, we're going to be left with pi times 25 times uh, 3 divided by, or 24 divided by 3 is going to be 8, so just 8, which equals 200 pi. Okay, so how do we get from 200 pi over 3 to 200 pi? Well, you're going to multiply this one by 3, right? Then you're just going to have your plain old 200 pi. So 3 times the old volume is going to be the correct answer again. OK. 
Good. Okay, now we are here with ratios. Um, if the radius and slant height are doubled, then which of the following statements about its surface area will be true? Okay, so it's asking, it's saying that all of the dimensions are going to be doubled. So the radius is going to be doubled and the slant height, which means we can't apply our rule here. We can't apply the kind of the blanket statement that since it is asking about the surface area, we're going to look at by how much it increases, which is double, and then we're going to square that. So what is squared of doubling something? Well, that's quadrupling or four. So what happens to the areas between the two? Uh, it's going to be bigger by a factor of four to one. Okay, ratio of four to one right there. Good. Okay, if the radius is halved, then which of the following statements about the volume will be true? So this is just going to be radius, not the height. So we'll go back here, okay. And complete the area, and complete the volume. So volume equals pi r squared h over three. Um, and so the volume of our first cone before the radius is halved is going to be pi uh, radius is four squared, so 16 times the height, which is seven over three, okay. 16 times seven is going to be 112. So 112 pi over three. Okay. Um, and let's go to the second shape. So we'll do pi times, now the radius is halved. So half of four is two. So two squared is gonna be four times our height of seven over three, which equals 28 pi over three, which equals nine pi. No, it doesn't. Never mind. It equals, which equals 28 pi over three. And can we reduce this down any further? Not really, right? So we're stuck at 28 pi over three. So how do we get from 28 pi over three to 112 pi over three? Well, you're just going to multiply this by four, right? If you multiply this by four, you're going to end up with 112 pi over three. And so four is going to be by how much it decreases, right? Because we're going from our first to our second. So um, how does it get to a size that is a fourth of what it was? Well, you are going to do a ratio of one to four, not four to one, but one to four, right? That's just saying uh, you're multiplying by one over four. So it's only going to be a fourth as large as it was before. Okay, so I think you get the idea. I'm gonna skip and see if there's anything different. Now we have ratios. More ratios, we get to 90. And you still have ratios, they don't give you a uh, diagram or a picture, that's totally fine. Um, this one says a cone's radius and slant height are tripled, so all the dimensions are tripled, that makes it easy. Then what happens to the surface area? Well, tripled is increasing by, uh, by three times three, so three squared is going to be nine because we're dealing with surface area, right? So it's going to increase by nine. All right, so that is where I'm going to end the video. Stay safe, study hard, and I will catch you for the next IXL tutorial video later on. Goodbye.